Welcome to this section of the course where we're going to talk about integration by substitution. Um, I've taught you how to do some basic integrals um, with the trigonometric functions and, uh, and mainly with polynomials. How do you integrate x squared, for instance? And there's sort of a canned formula for that. And what you're going to find, as I told you at the beginning of the class, is that pretty quickly you're going to get to do integrals that you're not going to know how to solve and you need to start to employ tricks, so to speak, in order to solve them. And there's a whole chapter on tricks, and, and we're going to get into all the different kinds of different ways you can do it. The first trick, so to speak, is called substitution. And the basic theme of this section is, if you don't know how to do an integral, okay, sometimes you can make a certain substitution in order to put the problem into a form that I already know how to solve. So I may give you a problem, and it may look like something you don't know how to do, but with a mathematical wave of your arms, you can transform that problem into a problem I do know how to solve. And when I get the answer to that problem, I'll have the answer to my original problem. That's what we're focusing on. And I think the easiest way to do that is to illustrate it by an example. So let's say you had an integral that was something like uh, the integral of x times x squared minus 1 all raised to the 99th power integrated, of course, over dx because that's the, inter the uh, variable that I have here. Okay. Well, obviously, I haven't given you any kind of a formula to learn how to integrate an integral like this. I've taught you how to integrate x squared and, you know, one-fifth x to the sixth power and stuff like that, the, the basic kind of integrals. But this is different, and you really can't even expand this because, I mean, something raised to the 99th power, you're going to have 99 different terms in there, and it's going to become a mess. So you technically could do that, but it would just take you take you forever. So how do you tackle this one? Well, let me, we're going to go through some examples and it's going to be clear. What I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to transform this integral from currently we're integrating over the variable x. Okay, we have x here in the integral and we're integrating over this dx, this differential x. I'm going to transform this integral to integrate over another variable and the name of the variable doesn't matter, but it typically Historically in calculus, you pick the variable u, okay? So it's going to be an integral over some function of u. It could be whatever. And instead of dx, we're going to end up with a du. And we're going to, we're going to integrate this. And we're going to get an answer, and you're going to see that it's going to give you the answer that you're looking for in the end. So the question is, how do I do this transformation? How do I make this problem easier? And the way you do that is, in this case, um, let's say you take u is equal to x squared minus 1. That's the substitution that we're going to make. So you can see that everything in the parentheses here is going to be equal to u. Now just bear with me and we're going to do some problems and you'll see how to do this. The next thing you need to do is, I already told you that we're going to transform this integrand into a variable of u, but we're also going to transform the uh, variable that we're integrating over into a du. And the way you do that is you define what u is. So let's go ahead and define what's du dx. This is the derivative of u with respect to x. Very simple to do that. We just need to take, this is, uh, this is the same thing as y uh, is equal to uh, x squared. Well, the derivative of y with respect to x is just 2x. Okay, you just take the derivative of the right-hand side. So here, it's just u instead of y. It's no different. So in order to find du dx, then you, um, you simply take the derivative. So what 